The 1966 Western film, The Professionals, is a film that was directed by Richard Brooks. It was also produced and written by him. Now, if you have never seen this film, you need to take the time to watch it. This is a great show. I just absolutely love this movie. It is superbly written, and the acting is top-notch, too. The film never drags. From the very beginning, this movie clicks along at a rapid pace and keeps you on the edge of your seat most of the time. The film stars Burt Lancaster and Lee Marvin in the starring roles. And it's about four soldiers of fortune that are hired by a wealthy Texan, played by Ralph Bellamy, to rescue his kidnapped wife, who is played by Claudia Cardinelli. You see, she's been taken across the Mexican border by a band of mercenaries led by Jesus Raza, played by Jack Palance. Now, these four rugged professionals, each of them are regarded as a specialist in their selected field. The expert marksman and tracker is played by Woody Strode. The explosive expert is played by Burt Lancaster. The top-notch horse handler is played by Robert Ryan. And the one that is skilled at tactics and weaponry is Lee Marvin. And they end up making their way across this treacherous landscape to retrieve this beautiful kidnappee. But once they get there, they discover that all is not what it seems in the explosive climax. Now, all of these performances are excellent. I mean, this is an all-star cast that is clicking on all cylinders. The musical score is superb, and the surprising twist in the plot make the professionals a real classic. It actually garnered three Academy Award nominations, two of them for Richard Brooks, for Best Director and Best Adapted Screenplay, and another one for Conrad Hall for Best Cinematography. Like I said, this film is full of action. It doesn't slow down at all. There is something being shot at or blown up pretty much all the time. But during the filming of the scenes where Maria, played by Claudia Cardinelli, she attempts to escape through the canyon that they wired with dynamite, her stunt double was terribly injured during that explosion. They actually had to do a reshoot of that because of it. And Claudia Cardinelli had never ridden a horse before, and she actually had to perform the stunt herself for the final cut. And she did it in excellent form and was not injured during the process. Now, Burt Lancaster was 52 at the time of filming, but he still insisted on doing all of his own stunts. Now, this is pretty tough stuff. They're climbing around on some pretty high rocks. He's getting hung upside down for a long period of time. It's pretty amazing stuff that he's 52 and doing this stuff. This is one of the first westerns to have nudity in it, but it's actually done at a long distance, so it's really fairly tame compared to today's standards. Now, because of the success of this film, the studio wanted to do a sequel. Like they always do. They always want to chase the dollars. And I can't say I blame them. But they only wanted to do it if the four principal actors would be involved in the film. And the reason being because of the fiasco surrounding the sequel to The Magnificent Seven. Where only Yul Brenner returned. But the problem was all of the principal actors had full filming schedules. And by the time a space could be cleared for the project, Robert Ryan's health, due to lung cancer, made it impossible for him to perform the physical work necessary for the movie. After his death in 1973, all the plans for a sequel were scrapped. Lee Marvin was just tickled to death to reunite with his old friend Woody Strode. They hadn't worked together since The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance in 1962. But these men had a genuine friendship ever since that movie. Strode always said that Marvin was a heck of a nice guy, a truly decent Marine that was pure in heart. Now, Lee Marvin kind of described Richard Brooks as an old-fashioned director, that he was a screamer and that he drove his cast pretty hard, almost to the point of exhaustion. And so at night, after filming stopped, 
you know what Lee Marvin's going to do. He's going to blow off steam. And the place that they were staying was Las Vegas because most of the filming was done in that general area. Lee Marvin and Woody Strode would stay up all night doing stuff at the casinos, getting drunk, acting like fools. But no matter how long that they had been up the night before, it said that Lee Marvin was a total professional by the time he had to arrive on the set the next day. He would be studying his dialogue on the way over to the set, and by the time he got there, he would know it. And he would always tell Woody, now watch me make old Bert blow his lines. Because he knew Bert Lancaster had been up all night studying his lines, and he was out partying with Woody Strode all night. He was truly gifted at doing this. Now, as I said, most of the film was shot in the desert outside of Las Vegas. So the cast and crew actually stayed in Vegas hotels. It's been reported that some of the nightly annex that they took part in was they actually dangled nude showgirls out their hotel windows. They also fired prop guns out the windows and actually had the police come one night. And because of Lee Marvin's status as an actor, he was able to keep he and Woody from going to jail. The very next night, they started shooting arrows out the same hotel window. They decided to shoot the arrows at Vegas Vic, which is the renowned neon cowboy that's on the Pioneer Club. And they actually took a prop bow and blew out old howdy partner with one well-aimed steel tip arrow shot from their hotel room. When the police showed up again, they apparently were able to stay out of jail because of Lee Marvin's star status. Now, the cast listing at the very beginning of the film is a little unusual in that the billing appears out of order. Lee Marvin is shown first. He's demonstrating a machine gun while his name superimposes on the screen. Then Robert Ryan is billed next over a sequence in which he knocks down a man for punching a horse. Then Woody Strode is shown subduing an unruly prisoner that's just been brought into this frontier town. And then finally, Burt Lancaster's name appears over a humorous scene with Lancaster in bed with another man's wife. He's then subsequently hurried escaping down a street after being interrupted by the furious husband. Now, Burt Lancaster has top billing in this movie but he's billed under the other professionals as a visual punchline at the top of the movie. Then, at the movie's conclusion, he is listed over Marvin, Ryan, and Strode as they ride toward the camera. Many of the scenes were filmed in the Coachella Valley, Death Valley, and Nevada's Valley of Fire. The train scenes were shot on the Eagle Mountain Railroad, a private, isolated rail spur located in the desert 50 miles east of Indio, California. The movie makes extensive use of the retired Great Western Steam Locomotive No. 75, which actually stands in for both the American and the Mexican locomotive. Now, Lee Marvin and Burt Lancaster didn't get along in this film at all, and it initially started because of a disagreement between them over the authenticity of weapons. Burt could have cared less, but Lee was very well known throughout his career on insisting on accuracy, and this was with guns and costumes. A big blow-up ensued with them. They just got into a fight on the set. The director tried to get Lee Marvin to make peace with Burt, because Burt really had an inflated ego. And just to pour salt into the wound, Lee Marvin actually got down on his knees and started wailing for forgiveness to Burt Lancaster. No one actually knew if Burt saw this and knew that Marvin was actually mocking him. But they hated each other during the film. Now, it went even farther than this. Burt Lancaster was a little bit, not a little bit, he was a whole lot irritated at the drinking that Lee Marvin did. Lee Marvin's alcoholism was pretty much going full tilt during this time of his life. And this just infuriated Burt Lancaster. 
Now, the director, Richard Brooks, actually had to intervene and try to settle things down because during the filming up on those mountains, he was really concerned that Burt Lancaster might get so mad that he would throw Lee Marvin off one of those mountains. This was really a concern of his. It didn't happen, and they got the sequences filmed up there, but he sure was worried about it at the time. This film is just full of little one-liners and quick dialogue between the characters. If you've never seen this movie, it would definitely be worth your while to watch it. And even if you've seen it, it's fun to watch again. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.